Hi everyone, well we are here at the Mandarin Festival getting our booth set up. This is so exciting to be here. The festival runs Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and we're here with Smart Pots. So thank you guys so much for inviting us out. Thanks for coming, yeah, we're looking you. forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So this is Jeff and Dustin with Smart Pots. Why don't you guys just tell us a little bit about Smart Pots and maybe how the company got started what smart pots are for those of our viewers who don't know about them yet? Well, smart pots are a fabric aeration growing container, so fabric planter. So you're gonna be able to plan anything and everything in a smart pot. And we're gonna show you out here that you can do everything from succulents to vegetables to tropicals to house plants to, and what we're doing out here is a lot of citrus, mandarins. So it's a fabric aeration container that root prunes the plant, and you're gonna be able to grow a bigger plant in a smaller footprint and it's a healthier way to grow plants because the roots are gonna be able to breathe, get light, get air, and, and it keeps those roots healthy and happy. So much better than a hard-sided container. Now, Dustin, what's your role here at the festival this weekend? Support everybody out here. Um, of course, Isley's and really educate people on the benefits of smart pots. Um, I've been growing smart pots for over 10 years now, and I have pots that are eight years, still look amazing. Planted a lot of stuff up for the festival to show people what you can grow and all the different varieties you can do. And you know what, Dustin, would you mind grabbing that microgreens little container down there? Because yeah. a lot of our viewers grow microgreens. And I really like to tell people, don't stop growing just because it's winter time. These are a nice little quick crop that you can grow and eat in about a week or so. Yep. So can you tell us a little bit about what you have? I started this there? about um, a week and a half ago, believe it or not, oh just growing outside with the light. And the thing I love about these guys is like you're talking about how quickly mm -hmm. you can get some greens and how healthy they are for you. Absolutely, they're packed with nutrients mm -hmm. and people can eat them in about a week to 10 days. Yep. Are these like little um, cabbage greens or arugula? Um, it's a mix of different type of greens. So there's some Swiss chard in there, some just really small ones, but I like growing these guys all the time just because how quickly they grow. We are so excited to be here. This is so much fun. It's a small town feel here in Auburn. It's gorgeous, and uh, you can see some of the vendors that we that are here. Uh, a little um, gazebo here in the center. If you want to swing around, Dustin, and show them the gazebo. It's just really a neat, neat vibe, neat feel here. Let's head back over here. And again, just mandarins everywhere. Well, day one of the Mandarin Festival is about to open, and before the gates open, we're gonna just take a little stroll down here. This is called Grower's Lane because it's where all of the Mandarin growers have the delicious Mandarin oranges. And there's all kinds of vendors and booths, all kinds of delicious Mandarin food. We can't wait to try it, to sample some of them today. Of course, you gotta have the ice cream. You'll have the chance to taste some of the delicious mandarin oranges. Look at those shakes, mandarin shakes and juice. One of the cool things is too, you could actually purchase a bag of mandarin oranges and then have them shipped home. And the post office is here and they will arrive before Thanksgiving. So mandarins just in time for Thanksgiving. Good morning, how are you? Great, how are you? Good, it looks delicious. Mandarin cookies, mandarin fudge, mandarin bread. That's a good one too. Morning. Morning. Good morning. I'm photo my own photo. <laughs> there you go. And I'm already smelling the kettle corn. Good morning. Oh, that smells so good. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Get a ride. Get a ride. <laughs> here we are at our booth, Cali Kim, Smart Pots right over here. Dustin, you travel all over the world with Smart Pots, which has really got to be a lot of fun. It's amazing. That's great. Now tell us one way that you've seen Smart Pots used that not a lot of people might know about. It's called Pot in Pot. So you have a beautiful terracotta pot and you can put a Smart Pot in there and pull it out. So up here in Northern California, we get a lot of the freezes during winter time. And what can happen to these glazed pots is it will actually crack or split 
and the pot doesn't look that great. So what you do is you pull the pot out and you can take this guy and winterize it as well as the pot. Just clean the pot, put it in your garden shed, and you're ready for next spring. Mm -hmm. Does it also work in like a larger size container, like yes. maybe for a small tree or something like that? You can definitely do that. And one of the true benefits of this, instead of getting the air pruning, you get the me mechanical pruning of the roots. So what that means is the roots will still come through, but you're still going to get some pruning in the pot so you don't get that root-bound plant. Well, that's really exciting. Yep. Thanks a lot, Dustin. I'm you're sure welcome. a lot of our viewers will enjoy hearing about that. Awesome. Thank you. Karen, you work at the Smart Pots headquarters in Oklahoma City. Yep, that's right. That's, that's a, exciting. The headquarters, absolutely. How cool. Now, tell me one story that you've heard from a customer or one way that you're involved that has really inspired you. Yeah, so we actually do a lot of work with uh, schools and nonprofit organizations. Um, and so it's really exciting when you get to hear the stories back from like the teachers or the principals of the schools talking about how the kids were super excited about getting to grow in smart pots and just get that passion going at a really early age. Yeah, so sometimes we'll donate like our smaller raised beds and they'll plant up a little raised bed garden and then sometimes we'll actually donate a, a pot and the kids can plant something up themselves and then they can take it home to their family and, it, and expose it to them and get that, that family excited about gardening. Oh, that's great because what I found and I'm sure you have too with your own kids is when they grow their own vegetables they're a lot more excited about yep. eating vegetables. Oh yeah, absolutely. So Jeff, tell us a little bit about how the smart pots fabric was made and where you make the containers. Smart pots are 100% made in the USA, which I, I think is awesome because there's not that many products left that are made in the US. Very true. But we're made in Oklahoma City. That's where we were founded. That's where we still manufacture all of our products today. Um, so everything from the bag, the fabric, to the label, to the tag, to the thread, well, we say bag to tag, it's manufactured in the United States of America, yeah, and we're proud about that. We have our own plant, Oklahoma City. We have employees that have been with us for 18 years, so hand sewing these bags um, at our, our factory. So, you know, people don't realize smart pots are everything from one gallon to a thousand gallons in sizes. So, and everything in between. This is a new color. This is our new, what we call natural. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, kind of a combination of our old tan and our black. The great thing about this fabric is that it is a little more UV protected. So oh, it's going to wow, have a really real heavy thing. UV protection to it. That's um, great. And it, it's, it's nice because it kind of blends in a little more. Mm -hmm. um, people wanted something a little different. It doesn't show dirt or you know outdoor wear and tear as much. So this is a fabric we've introduced this year to our line. Okay. Yeah, I love how the black fabrics are kind of inter interwoven throughout mm -hmm. the pot. It makes it really interesting. And then for the Cali Kim listeners, the, the exciting news is that next year, 2020, we're going to have three new colors to our line. And that's a, and I'll go this. ahead and spill the beans, but it's going to be a, 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 a purple, a orange, and a blue. Oh, it's that's kind of a great. turquoise blue. So those are going to be added in the first part of 2020. That's wonderful. And I know a lot of our viewers love to decorate their outdoor space yes. and really have the outdoor living feel. So those colors will really make their patios yes. pop. You can fill them with flowers or with vegetables, be functional and edible at the same time. Absolutely. Oh, those are pretty. Oh my gosh, those are beautiful. These are the most beautiful mums from Isley's Nursery. Is this the same stage I'm going to be speaking on tomorrow? Yes. Ooh. They actually have personalized Kelly Kim Garden and Home Smart Pots at the Mad River Festival. Yes. You can only get them here. That's right. It's a lot of fun. I work with Smart Pots and help that help show gardeners all over the world how to grow in a quick, simple, inexpensive way in containers without having to have a lot of space to grow vegetables. Earl. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Kim. Hi. And Jerry. Hi, Earl. So nice, nice to meet you. Kim yeah. does. Good she's a good. YouTube gardener out of Southern California that works with us. Oh. And I, I've told her about this, and she's up here for the home show. Uh -huh. So I wanted to bring her to, to show, and they could film it. They do a lot of YouTube videos and social media oh. stuff. So had to see your points at us. Beautiful. Perfect. I'm glad you did. We love it. <laughs> Thank you. This is gorgeous. So Earl's <laughs> mom and dad started the nursery. Wow. 85 years ago. 85 That's years about ago. Right. Yep, 1932. Selling pansies. You're kidding, so, 1932? Uh, wow. This was all chicken range. Really? 2,000 laying hens, and my granddad and dad had their chickens. Um, and at that point, of course, there's always fallout from chickens, 
and they grow that grows great pansies. <laughs> good fallout, definitely. So, the pansies yeah. took off, <laughs> and that's how it started. Natalie was one of the winners of the tickets for the Mandarin Festival. Yay! I'm so excited that you came out to see us today. And you drove from LA, My Los goodness, Angeles, yeah. which is about how far away? Like it's six hours is a drive. Yeah. Six hours. So she drove all the way from LA six hours to be with us here today. Thank you so much for coming out to see us. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about your garden. So currently, I'm growing um, carrots. In the past, I've also grown uh, tomatoes. So. And do you have raised beds, containers? What are you growing in? Yeah, so right now, um, the tomato was inside of a, I guess it's a raised bed. It's like along the, um, along our pool. Okay. And then the carrots was in a container. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Now, how did you first hear about us on YouTube? So, um, this is like many years ago, when I was first kind of trying to get inside of, you know, the whole gardening scene. Mm -hmm. um, I really couldn't find any YouTubers who was doing anything in California, but I wanted someone who was doing um, gardening in California so I could kind of learn from. And then I came across your YouTube video. And that's then great. that's how I kind of started, you know, getting more into it. And that's how I started trying carrots because before I would have never tried carrots. I would have probably just stuck to tomatoes. Oh, wow, that's exciting. <laughs> so I love how you've experimented and tried new things because that's what it's all about, trying new things and then learning from your mistakes and what works and what doesn't work, right? Yeah. Why do you like to garden? I think for me, it's really just knowing where my food comes from and then knowing um, what I'm putting inside my food. So that when I harvest it, I know what my body is. How does the flavor of homegrown compare to the flavor of store-bought? Doesn't compare at all. Um, I definitely can taste that the fruit is a lot more ripe. It's sweeter. Um, it can't. It just can't. It doesn't compare. Does it compare? No. Not the tomatoes all. from the grocery store versus your homegrown? No. I, I'll take I know. my homegrown tomatoes. No. Anytime, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Natalie. We really are just thrilled to meet you Yay. and call you our friend now that we've had a chance to meet you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been such an inspiration just watching you guys on YouTube. It's just so, oh my God, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing what you guys have done. Thank you so much. And we love to hear comments like that because it motivates us and encourages us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All kinds of different sizes, from like one gallon on up to thousand gallons. You can grow trees in it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for hanging out. How are you? Warm sun on your back, and just get into the soil with your hands. And there's something about just planting a little seed, and then there's a mirror. I, I feel like it's a miracle. I'm just watching it grow. We do. We do have some uh, potting mix in these uh, containers. Is that pretty? Yes. So much for the holidays. Well, we are here with Nisha, and she drove about an hour and a half here to the Mandarin Festival. She's one of our YouTube viewers and longtime followers on social media. And now she's our friend because we just got to meet her. Yes. So, Nisha, thank you so much for driving up to see oh, us. Oh, my pleasure. Oh. Thank you. So, tell me a little bit about your garden. Yes, I started it two years ago with this very small, like a pepper plant and a holly basil. That's what I started with killed so many times before. Oh, I did too. <laughs> yes, and then after watching your videos, growing how to grow peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers, and herbs. It's so simple how to grow in a smart pot, uh, and just simple dirt and the seeds you need. Start small, then expand your oh. motto. I always follow that, and now I have a very big garden. Oh, too. that's so exciting. Yeah. Now, tell me, like, where do you garden? I exactly garden outside my garage. I have no space, no okay. land, uh, so it's on the side of my garage. We, we have a one car, so we parked it, so I have on both sides. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you don't have like your typical backyard? No. So it is possible to grow in your small space, right? Yes, it's, it is. Now tell me about your tomato plant. You're growing it in a container? Yes, okay. I'm growing in a 15 gallon to 20 gallon uh, smart pot container with a good dirt soil. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it's um, red vine tomatoes. So they really vine up almost about six feet to eight feet. Oh my goodness. So I did not have a trellis to hold it well. So I literally took a twine and twined it up on the, where there was a block there, so I twined it up and it's growing. Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, so it's almost like seven feet <gasps> right now, yeah. So uh, have you got a lot of tomatoes from it in a container? Yes, uh, from one container I got about 100. <gasps> 
100 tomatoes from a Yeah, That's from incredible. spring to summer. And how do you harvest it? Because it's so tall. Yeah, I climb on a ladder. Oh <laughs> you have got to get us a picture of that. I would Absolutely, love to see it. I will. That's great. And what do you do with all those tomatoes? So I give it to my neighbors. I also send it to my mom in Albany. All the way from California to New York? <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, I always um, made um, pizza sauce and um, also love having on a grilled cheese. Fresh oh tomato tastes so much better than grocery stores. Oh, there's no, nothing like it, right? Yes. Now, you were telling me earlier how you've also inspired your mom and dad to grow yes. their own vegetables. Yes, I, I took them, um, I basically took a paper plant and a mint and um, put some soil with some tissue paper with water, sprayed water on it, and I ship it to them. And now they have a paper plant and mint growing. Oh my goodness. So in able... Albany, so it's very cold over there. It's incredible. So you ship plants that yes. you grew all the way across the country to your yes. parents. Yeah. And now they're growing too. And now they're growing. And, it, and mint is perennial, so it always mm -hmm. comes back. So in, the sun, in winter, she takes it inside, and in spring, she removes it outside and starts growing, and it's like blooming. So exciting. Yeah. Well, it's so amazing. You're such an inspiration to me, how you've, you've you taken are. your love for something, and you've shared it with other people. Yes. And you've started small, and then you've expanded into what you're doing now. Yeah. So thank you so thank much for you. being here today. I love your YouTube channel. It's like made me grown so much. So you have really inspired me. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you are my garden guru. That's what oh, I call it. thank you so much. So much. Yeah, thank I'm happy you. To be part of it. Yeah, same here. <laughs>Jeff with Smart Pots and we are the proud sponsor of Flo the Clown at the Mountain Mandarin Festival. And Flo's job is she runs around this fairgrounds, this whole festival and promotes Smart Pots the entire time. Interacts with children, interacts with adults, hands out a ton of uh, Smart Pots swag. She sends people to our booth. She's awesome at what she does. Best tasting Mandarin at the Mandarin Festival. That is so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, very exciting. We were very surprised. Really? Is your first we've time been, winning it? It is our first time, oh and we've gosh. been coming since the inception of the festival. And this is your daughter here? This is my daughter, Laura. Okay. My husband's at the farm picking, and it's his grandfather's ranch. Okay. And we, his grandfather started in 1927 and is one of the first who brought mandarins back with a group of three or four growers mm -hmm. in the er late 50s, early 60s. They began mandarins again in Placer County. Really? And these are the same trees that the fruit is off of that were planted way back then. They're so 50 six, years old. Yeah, six, oh 60 now, goodness. right? Yes. Yeah. We sell at the Auburn Farmers Market on Saturday mornings and we sell Tuesday mornings at the market at Roseville at Whole Foods. And then we do appointments on our farm. Mm -hmm. cool. And we ship. And we ship. And yes, ship. we do. Yes. Well, I do a lot of the picking. I do most of the farmer's markets as well. Mom has me come help at that. And I pretty much do a little bit of everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Little families involved. Yes. Uh -huh. My husband's part of it too. And yep. we just all try and make it a family ordeal. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're actually working on a trial project. And the fruit that won is from the trial to reinvigorate mm -hmm. old trees. Oh, to see exciting. if it was worth keeping them or digging them out and putting new trees in and it really seems to be working yeah, because so. <laughs> the slow pruning yeah. has really paid off it seems okay. to keep yeah. the trees really healthy while we're still pruning on them and everything. Oh, yeah. wow. mm -hmm. So all the all the, ta uh, the mandarins are hand picked. Right? Everyone hand clipped yes. because if you pull it <laughs> off the tree that little where the stem joins the fruit tears out and then your fruit doesn't keep for you. Okay. And, and the less the and it less bacteria mm -hmm. into yeah. the tree okay. also. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now I've heard like before we came up here that this area is especially known for the mandarins. Yes. And tell me a little bit about why that is and what's special about this area. Mountain mandarin growing area, it's a kind of a microclimate where you have your cool nights, which is what brings the sweetness and your flavor up, but you have your warm days, which mm -hmm. so we have a really a more intense flavor than you will have some of the people say that mandarins from the valley are more flat tasting, mm -hmm. where we have that more intense citrus oh, yeah. flavor and the sweetness. Easy to peel, yeah. of course, is with most mandarins. Um, we we grow, too cold. Right. Okay. We don't have right. the... Um, 
we grow the Aurora Satsumas only on our farm. We don't have any of the other newer varieties. Um, we grow navel oranges also. Yeah. yeah. And Lisa actually had me on her radio show, so thank you yes. for that as well. You're welcome. And I'd be looking forward to seeing you the next time you come up here. Thank you. Yes. It was so much you. fun to be here. Me too. Yeah. That's the end of the festival. It has been a blast. It's been an absolute blast to be here. We've had a ton of fun. We were so inspired and blessed that so many of you made it up here to see us. Yep. Some people all the way from LA, so that was just inspiring and touching. Very to cool. Us. And we also want to thank Smart Pots and the Mandarin Festival for having us up here. We had a ball and we look forward to next time. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next video. See you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>